first of all what is oet oet is an english language test which is designed for the health professionals specifically it is not a test of your medical knowledge so it will so it will not include any question relating to the medical knowledge <clears throat> it is completely an english language test now why to take oet what are the reasons why are you required to take the oet first of all if you need to take an english test for registration work or study in the healthcare or for uk ireland australia and many more countries now they require for you to attempt the oet exam these tests stimulate real workplace tasks that is the questions they are related to your workplace tasks and they are relevant language skills for each profession for example if you are a doctor if you are a nurse so it depends on your profession they test your relevant language skills for your specific to your profession <clears throat> by taking the oet you will provide you will prove uh, them that you have the right level of english plus you will also be learning the kind of language that you will need in everyday working for example when you go for uh, oet speaking you get to know how the speaking goes on and based on that when you go to these countries for example uk ireland or australia whenever you go over there and work there in their healthcare settings the techniques of oet speaking you apply you have to apply at your workplace so this is the reason why they are asking you to attend the oet exam <clears throat> the health professionals who are required to take the oet are divided into different categories these are the health professionals nursing dentistry pharmacy veterinary science occupational therapy radiography physiotherapy and medicine these are the health professionals who are required to take the oet exam <clears throat> next we have uh, some of the pros and cons of the oet exam the first one it is better it is better than the other english language tests because it has work related scenarios it has something related to your professional life that is your workplace experience so the questions are re relevant to your work related so it is be better than the other english language tests such as ielts or any other test secondly <clears throat> it has a higher pass rate marking is based on the grades and not on the specific numbers so this is another advantage that it has a higher pass rate third now it is available in more than 40 countries there are some drawbacks uh, of the oet exam first is the cost oet costs higher as compared with the ielts exam so this is a slight drawback of the oet secondly it is less frequent for the dates of exam of oet you have only two uh, dates available in a month for the oet exam as compared with ielts or any other test there are more more dates available so it is less frequent this is one of the disadvantage of the oet exam next we have the score requirement mostly um, the doctors nurses or any other professions their requirement is a minimum of b grade that is uh, equivalent to ielts score of 7 to 7.5 so in all of the modules they have to get a b grade to work study or get registrations of their council this is the score chart so for an a grade the score ranges from 450 to 500 to get a b grade it ranges from 350 to 440. till 2018 they used to give us a grade as a result but now they give us a score ranging from 350 to 440 or 450 to 500 depending on your uh, scores <clears throat> so this is equivalent to i'll score of 7 to 7.5 This is for C plus C and D. A few of the nursing councils, a few of the nursing departments, they accept C plus also. And a few other categories like veterinary science doctors, uh, veterinary doctors, they are also, for them also, C plus is also acceptable, but very rare cases. So mostly we have B grade. Now, starting with the modules, 
of the OET, we have four modules, listening, speaking, writing, and reading. Talking about listening and reading, they are common to all the professions. That means they are similar for, same for all the professions, whether it is medicine, nursing, pharmacist, dentistry, any profession, it will be same for all. <clears throat> Speaking and writing, it will be profession specific. That means if you are a doctor, if you are a nurse, if you are a radiographer, pharmacist, it will be specific to your profession. Listening, the time duration is 50 minutes. It is divided into three parts and 42 questions. Reading, we have a time limit of 60 minutes. That is one hour divided into three parts and 42 questions. Writing, 45 minutes. We have one task given. So you are allowed to, you are required to attempt only one task in writing. <clears throat> in speaking, lasts about 15 to 20 minutes and you are given two tasks that are the role plays. Now let's come to the detail of each module. First of all, listening, it lasts for about 15 minutes divided into three parts, A, B, and C. Part A, it has consultation extracts, which last for about five minutes each. In this one, you will listen to two recorded health professional and patient consultations. And based on their consultation, you have to fill in the case notes of the patient given to you. So there will be two such extracts over here. <clears throat> For part B, you have uh, six recorded extracts, which are basically workplace extracts, and they are taken from the team briefings, handovers, or health professional patient dialogues, and you will be required to answer multiple choice questions for each extract. So each extract will have one question. So six extracts, we have six questions over here in part B. Coming to part C, they are presentation extracts. We have two extracts over here five minutes each. It can be presentation extract or it can be the type of interview as well. So here we are required to answer six multiple choice questions for each extract. So extract one, we have six questions. Extract two, we have six questions. So this is the format of the listening test. This is a sample of the listening test. This is part A, in which we have the consultation extracts. This is extract one. So it's like these are the case notes of the patient given to us. They are like patient details, symptoms, occupation. It can be about the treatment. It can be about the diagnosis. So we have to fill in these missing information from the consultation extracts, which we are listening to. This is part B of the listening test. We have one extract for this question, one extract for this and one for this. So like this, we have six questions. It will be of one to one and a half minute extract. So you have to select the best answer out of these three options given to you. And part C sample, I don't have it over here. So we can discuss that later on. Coming to the reading part, <clears throat> divided into three parts, A, B, and C. Here, the time is also divided. It lasts for about 60 minutes. And part A is about 15 minutes. Part B and C combined are 45 minutes. In part A, there are four short texts given to you, which relate to some healthcare topic. For example, it can be relating to anything such as anemia. It can be about fractures. It can be about tetanus, anything like that, relating to a healthcare topic. Based on these four extracts, you have to answer 20 questions. These 20 questions are divided into three subtypes that are matching, sentence completion, and short answer questions. In 15 minutes, you have to complete the part A. Part B assesses your ability to identify the detail, gist, or main point of six short texts sourced from healthcare workplace. So detail, just is the purpose or main point of the six short texts given to you. The texts are taken from the policy documents, hospital guidelines, manuals, or internal communications such as emails or memos. For each text, you have to answer one question. So we have six texts and six questions. 
<clears throat> Part C assesses your ability to identify detailed meaning and opinion in the two longer texts given to you. We have a longer text of about one to one and a half pages, and each text will have eight questions following it. So second text and eight questions. So we have two texts given to us in part C. So this is about A, B, and C. Now looking at the samples, examples of this. This is part A of the reading divided into four parts, A, B, C, and D. These are the texts. It is divided into four different texts. And then we have 20 questions following these texts. So this is about fractures. So something related to healthcare topic. These are the questions for part A. This is the matching ones. Matching means you have to match this information with those texts given to you. So this is like in which text can you find information about this thing? So you have to match this information with these texts given to you. So this is matching. Then you have short answer questions. That is one word, two word or three word answer question. And the third type will be your sentence completion. That is the fill in the blanks. This is for part A. Second, we have part B. This is the text given to us. It's about a manual, it's taken from a manual. So this is the text and we have this question following it. The manual informs us that the blood pressure monitor, now what is this manual telling us about the blood pressure monitor? What does it inform us? So that will be the basic idea or the basic purpose. So part B questions are relating to purpose or main idea. So we have to select the main idea from this text. <clears throat> Part C, we have a longer text. That is, if you can see here, it's about one and a half page. And we have eight questions following this text. We don't have to read all the texts and come to the questions. The questions are divided into paragraph wise. Like if you can see here in the first paragraph, what does the writer say? What do we learn about this in the second paragraph? So it is paragraph wise. So we can just specific so it specifically go on to that paragraph and find the answer. The second thing in part C is, this is the opinion based questions in part C. Second is the detailed meaning. Meaning means vocabulary. So in the fifth paragraph, what does the word it refer to? So this is a, we have to find the meaning of this word in from that specific paragraph. Or for example, we can see here in the third paragraph, what idea is emphasized by the phrase, by no means the be all and the end all. So this is a phrase given to you. You have to get an idea what can be the meaning of this phrase from the paragraph. So this is about the detailed meaning or vocabulary questions. So part C includes opinion questions and vocabulary questions. The third module is writing. The task given to you is you have to write a formal letter and uh, we have three types of letters. They are discharge letter, transfer letter and referral letter. Mostly doctors get a referral letter, nurses will get a discharge letter and all other professions it's uh, similar to their writing. Okay, along with the task instructions, you will receive the stimulus material that is case notes. So case notes will be given to you. You have to arrange those case notes in the form of a letter which is a completely formal letter following the format of complete letter writing and then you have to write that letter you have to be very specific in your letter and you have to take care of the word count for the writing part we are going to discuss in detail about uh, what we have to follow in the writing how do we have to arrange the case notes and we will be looking at uh, as an example of letter writing in detail after this introduction so we have three types of letter, discharge, transfer, and referral letters. This is an example of the case notes given to us. Patient details, social family history, medical histories, uh, visit histories, and your plan, like what you have to do, what is your task. You have to arrange these notes into a letter format. And your word count is 180 to 200 words, so you don't have to exceed this word count. Remaining, we are going to discuss in detail about the writing. So this is just an example of the case notes given here. The last module is the speaking part. 
In the speaking test, your identity and profession are checked by the interlocutor at first. Second, there will be a warm-up conversation about your professional background. The interlocutor may ask you about your education, about your professional work experience, from where did you do come from, so basic questions about your introduction. After that, you will be given role plays and the interlocutor will be the patient, you will be the doctor. Or if you are a nurse, you will be the nurse and the interlocutor will be the patient. One role play will be given to you. You will have three minutes to prepare for that role play and you will have to play the role for five minutes. Then you will be given second role play. You have three minutes to prepare for it and you, uh, you will play the role for five minutes again. So this is an example of the role play of doctors given to us. This is the doctor's role play and this patient's role play will be given to the, it will be with the examiner. So this is your role play. What you have to do in this, you have to go through all the information given to you. You have to make it in your own words. You have to apply some techniques of uh, such as you have to ask questions from the patients. You have to be sympathetic towards the patient. You have to check for understanding of the patient by following these tasks. And this role play should last about five minutes. So for example, let us read this role play. This 45 year old patient is attending the practice after suffering from a mild anterior acute myocardial infarct two weeks ago. Recovery was uncomplicated and the patient was discharged from the hospital four days ago. She is now concerned about the long-term process of recovery. So this is the background information given to us. Now our task is find out what is worrying the patient and be reassuring. Some fatigue is to be expected and usually takes some weeks before full energy levels return. So you start with your introduction, like you are introducing yourself as a doctor. Then you are asking the patient what is concerning him. After listening to the concerns of the patient, you have to start with your first point. So you have to find out first what is worrying the patient. And then you have to be sympathetic. You have to be reassuring. You have to reassure the patient that there is some fatigue that will be expected and it will take some days for him to return. So like that, you have to make it in your own words, not repeating the exact sentences given over here. Then advise the patient the importance of joining the cardiac rehab program at a nearby hospital in, in order to increase the exercise tolerance under supervision. So your advices. First, you have to advise the patient about joining the rehab program. Then you have to tell about the importance of exercise. So the main thing in this is how you have to arrange this in proper sentences, how you have to be very formal with the patient, how you have to act as a doctor. And what are the things you are scored on so that things are very important to be focused on. So this is all about the speaking part. Okay, here we come to an end of the introduction to OAT. That is all about the modules, the four modules, timing and durations, and then number of questions and how you have to answer them and the types of questions. Okay, so this is the end of the introduction of OET. Now, if anyone has any questions, they can proceed with your questions. And then after that, we are going to discuss the writing part in detail. Questions, please. How long is it valid for? It is valid for two years. The date of your exam starts from the date of your exam, uh, sorry, result of your exam from there, two years. Hello? Yes, please.
Okay. So first of all, uh, do's and don'ts when taking the OET writing subtest. First of all, I'm going to tell you what you have to focus on and what you have to avoid. After that, we are going to discuss one complete letter. All right. So first of all, <clears throat> if you think working in a hospital for years guarantees a high OET writing rate, then that's your biggest mistake. In the OET uh, writing subtest, you have to focus on how well you have accomplished the task. That means how well you have understood the task, what they are exactly asking you about. How appropriate is the language you have used? Now, in this case, we have to be completely formal. We uh, don't have to include even a single informal word. So we have to take care of the language we are using. And you have to write in a way that you are requesting. So when you're writing a referral letter to some other doctor, you are requesting that doctor or you are advising that doctor. You don't have to order him. So this is all about the language. How well you have responded to the test stimulus. That means what exactly they are asking you, how well you have responded to that specific question. How well structured and coherent is your writing? How well structured? Structure is the most important thing, how you are structuring them. What are you writing in your introduction, in your second, uh, first body paragraph, second body paragraph, and what are you writing in your conclusion? That structure is very important. And then combining the relevant things first. For example, if I write the history first, so I will combine all the history together. If I'm writing the presenting complaints first, so I will combine all the present things together. I don't have to make a mix up of all those. How coherent is your writing means how well you have organized your ideas and how well the usage of your words are in your writing. How well you have presented your composition. That means your paragraph should not be too long. That means if you're, suppose you're writing your introduction for five to six lines, so that will not be a good presentation. So your presentation, that is the first impression of your letter should be well stru structured. <clears throat> Second, what you have to, the things you have to focus on. First of all, you have to, you'll know the, that the case notes in the writing subtest are not the most straightforward. That means you have to understand what they are telling you. It will be presented in a mix of phrases, abbreviation, shorthand symbols, and single word analysis. So you have to understand what exactly they are telling you. You have to interpret the case notes, and then you have to form your statements. Consider the timeline of the patient's past diagnosis. When you are mentioning the history of the patient about the past visits of the patient, you have to take care of the timelines. Timelines means if the patient visited three years back and there are, for example, if the patient visited in 2017 and there are three or four visits, different visits in 2017. So you have to un understand like in which visit what happened or in which visit, what was the complaint of the patient? In the next visit, what was the complaint? So you have to take out the specific information from those visit histories. So that is about the timeline. Structure your letter. Yeah, now your structure of your letter is very important. It should be grammatically perfect, no grammar mistakes in it. It should have a logical development of the ideas. That means if you are going with the history first, then you come to the present, or if you're starting with the present first, then go on to the history. So that development or that structure should be logical. Some things which are important to note are, state the purpose of your letter and primary medical concern it addresses in the first paragraph. So medical concern, the main medical concern and your purpose should be mentioned in your first paragraph because it's the most important thing and it should be very prominent. You are given separate marks for your purpose. So that thing is very important. Gather different ideas in a single paragraph to enhance the clarity and coherence. So a mix up like, for example, if I say uh, the patient was advised for exercise as well as pain relief, as well as uh, he was advised to reduce weight. So all the advices, together in one paragraph. That will be clarity. Use transition words to smoothly initiate the flow of ideas. You can use transition words. He was suffering from this condition because of which the doctor ordered some blood tests. 
so i can say um, the patient who was suffering from um, the patient was suffering from diabetes due to which uh, the doctor requested some of the blood tests so due to which is my transition word which i am connecting the two ideas my two statements so these are the words we have to focus on and we have to increase their usage use the correct letter format that means arranging your letter in a proper format whom you are addressing to then your date and then your introduction so you have to write in proper ways learn about the proper ways to write the recipient's name address and more of the things given to you about the salutation and about the closing phrase of your letter these are the things which are important and if you make errors in these things about the letter format then your score goes down some of the things which we have to avoid during the writing part the first 5 minutes of your exam is reserved specifically for reading throughout the task don't waste a single set second don't waste wait for that 5 minutes quickly read it highlight the points underline the points write down the points if you want uh, i think writing down is not so necessary you can just quickly underline it you can circle it but yes if you are attempting a computer based test then you can write it down in a separate paper to make it easier for you pay attention to the task it usually contains the recipient's identity work or personal address which is important for you to mention over there include everything in your letter that means don't make mistakes while taking out the information what you have to mention and what you don't have to mention so everything means the things which are relevant to the patient you have to pick out the relevant things and you have to put it in your letter exclude all the irrelevant things don't exceed the word count don't include even one informal word in it then don't forget to proofread your work once you are satisfied with your letter give it a once over keep an eye for the misspellings yes you are your score is deducted for your spelling mistakes that is included in your grammar missing punctuations punctuations are very very important and grammatical mistakes which can be mistakes of prepositions conjunctions or usage of tenses whether you're talking about past present or which tense are you talking about make sure there are no issues when it comes to the usage of articles a and and the there are some grammatical rules which tells us that where do we have to use a and and the so we have to follow the specific rules singular and plural nouns count and mass nouns subject verb agreement verb tenses conjunctions and prepositions so all these things are very very important in your letter now here is an example of the case notes i am going to mark all the points here which i am going to include in my letter and then i will give you some sample statements like this is the way i am going to form my statement and write the letter okay so i'm going to mark here first we will read the case notes and then we will mark the points which are relevant so you will come to know how we are going to select the relevant or specific information so reading time 5 minutes and writing time 40 minutes patient details okay you are a practitioner examining a 45 year old patient miss any hall patient details name is miss any hall date of birth is this height 163 cm weight weight and bmi so three things are given to me social history is given to me that she is a teacher she is divorced she is a non smoker and she is a, so a social drinker substance intake is nil allergies codeine dustmite sulfur dioxide family history mother hypertension asthmatic father peptic ulcer maternal grandmother died of heart attack aged 80 maternal grandfather asthma attack paternal grandfather unknown and paternal grand grand sorry grandfather died old age 94 previous medical history childhood asthma chicken pox measles tonsillectomy hepatitis a whiplash injury depression overweight upper respiratory tract infections dyspepsia and dermatitis presenting complaint 
Now presenting complaint means this is my today's complaint. This is my today's date and this is the complaint of the patient presenting today at my clinic. Dysphagia for solids onset two weeks ago, post viral, URTI, self medicated with OTC, Chinese herbal products, contents unknown, no relapse, remittent course, no sensation of the lump, no obvious anxiety, concomitant epigastric pain, radiating to the back, level T12, weight loss 1 to 2 kg, rapid increase in coffee consumption, takes aspirin occasionally. Provisional diagnosis is gastroesophageal reflux and my plan is I'm referring to the gastroenterologist for opinion and the endoscopy if required. Decrease coffee and alcohol intake, seize the OTC product and pentaprazole. Now, what I have to do is I don't have to read all of this at first and then go back and again mark it. This was just for your understanding, which I have done. Normally in the exam, what you will do is you're going to read the patient details, name, date of birth, okay? And then find out what is the complaint of the patient? What is the patient suffering from? Is there any confirmed diagnosis made? Is there any provisional diagnosis made? So find that out. Relevant to that, you have to take out the information. So I know my patient's name. I know my patient's age. He's 45 years. Now I look at the diagnosis made. So it's a provisional diagnosis that is gastroesophageal reflux with possible stricture. What is my purpose of writing? My purpose of writing is, first of all here, that you're referring to the gastroenterologist for opinion and endoscopy. Second, your purpose, you will come to know your purpose from the question. So write a letter of referral for the investigation and definitive diagnosis to the gastroenterologist, Dr. Jason Roberts. So your purpose of writing is you want for the investigation and a definitive diagnosis from Dr. Jason Roberts, and you want opinion regarding the endoscopy. So this is your purpose, which you will mention in your introduction. Now I am writing to the gastroenterologist. So the things which you feel are relevant or which should, which should be known by the gastroenterologist or something related to the condition of the patient only those things I have to take out from this case notes. So from the social history, if we see teacher, she's a teacher, she's divorced, she is a non-smoker since children are born, and she's a social drinker, mainly spirits. Now, which social history is the most relevant over here? I have to take out only the relevant histories. She's a teacher, doesn't matter. Occupation doesn't matter, but it's optional. If you want to mention, you can. She is divorced, not necessary. If I don't include, it will, it will not make any, like uh, any effect on my letter. Okay, non-smoker, since children born, yes, you can. Like before her children was born, she used to smoke. But now she's a non-smoker, so not a very important information. You can skip this. So this is again optional. She is a social drinker, yes. So this is our first point, first important point. Okay, let me just underline it. This is the point which we are going to include. Okay, substance intake is nil. Allergies. She, she is allergic to codeine, the smites and sulfur dioxide, yes. Because she is allergic to so many things, so yes, all of them. Allergies is always important. We have to mention it. Okay, family history. Family history, only those things which are relevant to her condition of gastroesophageal reflux. So mother hypertension, asthmatic, not necessary. It's not something relevant to her condition. Okay, father had peptic ulcer, yes. So father had peptic ulcer, this will be important. Okay, heart attack, no. Asthma attack, no. Died old age, 94, no. So from the family history, I found only one specific thing, relevant thing, relevant to the condition of the patient. Next, coming to previous medical history. Again, I have to select only those medical history which can be somewhat relevant to the gastroesophageal reflux, the diagnosis of the patient. Childhood asthma, chicken pox, measles, not relevant. Tonsillectomy, no. Hepatitis A, no. Whiplash injury, no. Depression, doesn't matter. Overweight, mm. 
overweight in 2008. So she was overweight in the past, that, that doesn't matter, but she is overweight right now at present, that is important. Okay. In 2010, she had upper respiratory tract infection. So upper respiratory tract infection, somewhat related to gastroesophageal, no, it's not relevant. Dyspepsia, yes. This is the important information here. And one more thing. The next one is dermatitis. Normally, dermatitis is not something relevant to the condition of the patient. But because the patient is taking corticosteroids for it, we have to mention this also. Because we have to tell the doctor that the patient is taking corticosteroids. And for what she is taking, that also we have to tell. So that's why we will mention dermatitis as well. <clears throat> Coming to the presenting complaint. Presenting complaint. This is the present date. That is today's date. Okay, presenting complaint is dysphagia for solids. Onset two weeks ago, post-viral URTI. She is taking self-medications for this, which has Chinese herbal products and unknown contents. So presenting complaint paragraph or the presenting complaint section is always important. All of them, we have to write it. So no relapse, remittent course, and no sensation, thumb, no obvious anxiety. We can combine these things. Like with what she doesn't have, we can just combine this in one sentence. Epigastric pain, which is radiating to the back. Weight loss of 1 to 2 kg, yes. Recent increase in coffee consumption. Takes aspirin occasionally, 2 to 3 times in a month, no other answers. So all this information is important. Now, what is my plan? That is my rectal plan. This is my rectal plan. Okay. I am referring to the gastroenterologist for opinion and endoscopy. I have to tell the doctor to, or I have to advise the patient to decrease the coffee and alcohol intake, cease the OTC product she is taking, and I will prescribe pentaprazole 40 mg daily. Use of passive voice is very important in your letter writing. That is, I don't have to write, I prescribed pantaprazole to my patient. No, I will say, Miss Annie Hall was prescribed pantaprazole or has been prescribed. So depending on the condition, if at present I prescribed her, so it will be has been. If in the past prescribed her, so was prescribed. So use of passive voice is very important in this. <clears throat> and then again, your purpose from here. Whom you are writing to, address and everything. So you will start your letter by addressing, then salutation, and then coming to the introduction. So you are addressing to whom? First, Dr. Jason Roberts, Newtown Hospital, then the address of the hospital and city's name. After that will be your date. Date will not be the date of your exam. It will be the last visit date, this one. This is presenting complaint. That means it's today's date. So the date which I will mention on my letter will be this one. Next line, RE, that is regarding or referring the patient. Whom I'm referring? Miss Annie Hall and her age. So name and age of the patient. Next, dear Dr. Jason Roberts, or no, it's the second name. You always write the second name later on, Dr. Roberts. So, dear Dr. Roberts, and then I will start with my introduction. In my introduction, I will introduce the patient again, name and age of the patient. What is the problem with the patient? The diagnosis suspected, and then my purpose of writing. Just this much with the introduction. Name, age of the patient. Occupation is optional if you want to write it. Diagnosis and purpose. That is your introduction. First body paragraph, now there are two ways. I can write the presenting complaint paragraph first, then I can go on to the histories or else after the introduction, I can combine all the histories together in one paragraph and then the second body paragraph I can write for the presenting complaint. So it's totally up to you. According to the case notes, we can arrange it. There's no fixed rule that how we have to write it. So after the introduction, if I'm writing the presenting complaint paragraph, so all the information together in one paragraph. Third paragraph, I'm writing about the histories. 
So this is medical history and the social history together. Then I can write about the um, allergies and being overweight. I can write that together. And then my last paragraph or the conclusion will be my plan. So all this in one paragraph, the referral plan. And then your closing will be, if you require no further queries, please do not hesitate to contact me. Yours sincerely, Dr. So-and-so. This is the way of writing the letter. Let's read the sample answer for this. Dr. Jason Roberts, Newtown Hospital, address, city's name, date, dear Dr. Roberts, I'm referring Miss Any Hall, date of birth this. So you can write either the date of birth or the age. It's totally up to you, whatever you want to write it. And this reference statement or regarding statement, you can write over here also. So you can write before dear doctor or after dear doctor. Both ways are right. So there are multiple ways which we can take the letter. My introduction. Thank you for seeing Ms. Hall, 45-year-old secondary school teacher who presented today with a two-week history of esophageal reflux with possible stringture. So now, name of the patient, age of the patient, complaint or diagnosis, and then your purpose. Your, your purpose is I am referring her to uh, for further investigation and endoscopy. That's all with the introduction. And then um, they have written the presenting complaint first. Symptoms follow a constant course and include dysphagia for solids, epigastric pain, radiating posteriorly to the T12 level, concomitant 1 to 2 kg weight loss, problem commenced after an upper respiratory tract infection two weeks ago, for which she self-medicated herself with an over-the-counter Chinese herbal products. So for which, this is a transition word or the linking word. So these kinds of words are very important. There are no apparent signs of anxiety, no sensation of plum. Recently increased her coffee consumption, now the history. Takes aspirin two to three times a month. She has a history of dyspepsia, dermatitis, for which she's taking the corticosteroid. She ceased smoking 15 years ago. She drinks socially, has a family history of peptic ulcer, and is allergic to cordine. Her BMI is 28.2. So they have combined all the history together. You can mention the allergic statement separately also you can write the bmi statement separately also so again different ways <clears throat> miss hall reduces her i have recommended that miss hall reduces her coffee and alcohol intake most appropriate way here not using the active voice they have used the active voice here but try not to use it miss hall was recommended to reduce her coffee and alcohol intake in addition Pantoprazole prescribed. So like this. Moreover, in addition, other than this, besides this, these are the words which we can add. I would be grateful if you could provide Ms. Hall a definitive diagnosis. So this is your conclusion. If you require any further information, please do not hesitate to contact me. Your word count starts from here. It starts from here till here. So this is the body of your body of your letter only the word count from here is counted so it should be around 180 to 200 words it should not exceed 200 so this is the word count which you have to write you don't have to exceed more than this so this is all about the writing and i hope i have cleared and i have explained it in a perfect manner hope you all have understood this thing now we can go on to the question and answer session, please. Email. So thank you so much, everyone.